Good morning YouTube. Uh, I'm going to shoot a short video on how to choose the right side by side for you or you and your family. First thing that I would consider right off the bat is your budget. How much do you want to spend on your machine? Do you want to finance it? If so, how long? Do you want to put money down? Do you want to have accessories put on right away and finance that in the deal? Or do you want to pay for them uh, after you purchase the machine? There's really a lot that goes into it that I didn't realize when I purchased my first side-by-side, -side, which was a 2021 Honda Pioneer. And after three months, I already upgraded to a 2022 Commander 700 DPS. So one thing you want to consider right off the bat is where am I going to store the machine? I have this shed, and if you can see, I'll show you from the outside. I had to cut this panel out, and it's removable because of clearance issues I had with my Pioneer 700. I'll be walking around, so I apologize ahead of time for the video. I originally parked it under here, and then my truck was uh, sitting out in the weather, and I prefer to keep that under the carport. My shed was a gym. It's got heating and air conditioning. I had to move that to the basement. Uh, lots of things going on. I borrowed a trailer to get my first machine home, so I had to buy a trailer. That was another $1,800. You got to have a vehicle to haul the trailer. Uh, I had to buy a drop hitch because it didn't work with my regular hitch. A lot of things add up and it adds up quick. If you get a bare bones machine and even some that aren't bare bones, you're still going to need a few things. A roof and a windshield. I wish they just came standard on every one, but there's a lot of options out there. Some people want a flip windshield. Some people want a power flip windshield. Some people want a glass windshield. Some people want a vented windshield. And that's just the beginning of it. What type of riding are you going to be doing? A lot of stock tires, if you're going to ride them on the road, you're going to have a rough ride and you're going to wear them out pretty quick. So tires may have to be upgraded almost immediately. Do I need a dump bed? Do I not need a dump bed? Do I need a two-seater or a four-seater? So many options uh, out there. So I'm going to start with budget-friendly. This machine right here, I believe, is around $14,000. Depending on the dealer, they can go all the way up to $16,000. Kind of a budget-friendly. It's a Can-Am 700. Has the dump bed, just a two-seater, rides nice, 65 miles an hour. I've done a ton of upgrades just to get it the way I like. I didn't need tires and rims, but I found some off of an upgraded model that somebody took off, got a decent deal on them, and put them on. I'm going to do the Happy of McCoy Trails, so I bought a tablet holder and a new tablet with maps already downloaded on it. Still got my phone mount. On the side there, uh, rear view mirror, I wanted it and needed it uh, because the make the street legal in my town. I have to have mirrors, blinkers, um, horn, brake lights, safety triangle, lots of things just to make it street legal. If you paid a dealer to put in this $100 blinker kit, $150 blinker kit, they want $700 to do it. So if you're not mechanically inclined or don't Plan on learning how to maintain the machine yourself. Put that in your budget. Some dealers on the first initial service are charging up to $600 on certain machines for an oil change, a valve adjustment, and a few other simple things. So watch a lot of YouTube. Talk to your friends. Talk to someone who knows how to maintain a machine before you purchase, or that's going to cost you a fortune in that alone. A lot of people want some different lights. It's nice to have these lights that I installed on the back of my roof because when you back up, you can't see a thing without them. So that was a good option. Put a bumper on, a few other things. Uh, just lots of options. So let me get back to the initial 
Question, which side-by-side -side should I buy? Uh, if a four-seater is mandatory and you're on a budget, uh, two machines come to mind. The Yamaha Wolverine X4 and the Kawasaki Terex four-seater. A couple things about these machines. The Terex is a great machine, handles good, super reliable. All the rental companies use them. But with the Terex, you're going to get some cab noise. And I think they're warm in the summer as well. So noise is a factor. Otherwise, great entry-level machine. They come with a decent suspension from the factory. Again, there's some different models. You'll want a roof and a windshield on it. But you are going to have some cab noise. Uh, you may get some complaints from your passengers. The engine is directly in the center of them. They're supposed to have a great center of gravity, but the downside of that is cab noise. Um, Yamaha X4 Wolverine 850. Heard it's a great machine. I'm sure there's some knocks on every machine. That's another great option for a budget four-seater, but you do not get the dump bed. Uh, you can see this machine is 128 inches long. They have a Commander 1000 Max, which is a four-seater, but it's like a school bus. It's this same machine with the dump bed with four seats. It's gigantic. It wouldn't fit in my shed. So for me, that one wouldn't work. Um, that is the only option in a four-seater with a full dump bed. I'll except for the Honda Pioneer four-seater. The seats in the back fold down and you still have your dump bed. The problem with that, the back seats are very uncomfortable for passengers. My recommendation, if you're getting a machine for your family, bring them along when you buy it. Uh, that's not always an option. Sometimes you want to do a surprise. But the, let the passengers get in the back seat. So many complaints. People get a machine, they sell it, and they say their passengers complained. Uh, you can get a good deal on one of those machines, but you have to decide who's going to be riding in it and what type of riding you're going to be doing. If you have a few acres uh, or a farm and you're going to be buzzing around the property, checking crops, checking on animals, throwing a hay bale on the back, doing some landscaping projects, you can get by with a cheap utility vehicle like the Honda Pioneer. 700 or the Pioneer uh, even a 520 you can pull a small trailer with it you can throw stuff in the back of it very reliable but if you plan on riding it on the road or taking it on trails you're not going to get there very fast and you're not going to have a comfortable ride that's some things to consider you want a pure sport machine uh, the RZR by Polaris uh, the Commander Maverick that's your another performance uh, the Yamaha uh, YXZ, I believe, is a nice machine. Uh, if you want something that has performance, that you can ride on the trails and utility, three machines that I would look at. The Commander 700 or the 1000, obviously more performance out of the 1000. There's an XT model that's really nice. Uh, the next step up is an XTP a little bit bigger tires and wheels, a little bit different uh, differential lock and transmission. Uh, comes with a winch and a few other add-ons. And then there's also an XMR that's geared a little bit different. Might be more of a mud machine. Uh, just do some research, watch some reviews, different things like that. In that same category, the sport utility, you've got the Yamaha R-Max. Some people say it was a little tight in the cab form or it was too tall. Other than that, R-Max, very capable machine. Also, the Players General. You got good and bad on all the machines. Not There's not uh, three good choices that people can make that works perfect for them. One of them is probably better for you and you're going to buy it and you're going to find something you don't like about it that you may have to change. Um, that's about the only categories there is. Pure sport, sport utility, or just utility. Uh, if you're looking at straight utility uh, with something that you could take on trails, that's something that does get up and go pretty good, I would look at the K&M Defender. You also got the Polaris Ranger XP. 
Uh, and there's some different Yamahas. There's a Yamaha Viking. They have something with a dump bed option. But really in that category, uh, something utility that you could take on the trails, I'm looking uh, at the Defender. And the Pioneer 5, not bad, but again, your passengers aren't going to be very comfortable in the rear of those. So budget, place to store it, and how you're going to haul it around. I see a lot of pictures, people bringing home a new machine on a U-Haul trailer. All right, well, if you're just going to use it at home, you're fine. But if you're going to take it somewhere, you're going to have to get a trailer. Um, I like to shoot these videos. I like to get information out there. I don't want people to make the same mistake as I did and have to get a different machine right away. But this one, I, I like it. I like everything about it. There's nothing that I want to change on it that I haven't changed already. The seats are comfortable. It's good on the trail. I can throw stuff in the bed. It's got a trailer hitch. It fits in my shed. Fits on the trailer. It's quiet. It's smooth. It's an awesome machine. Especially if you have a budget in mind and you'd like to do some upgrade yourself, go with the standard model. Um, if you want something that comes a little bit more equipped, the 700 XT, awesome machine. Comes with a winch, comes with the roof, comes with a front bumper, comes with these tires and rims on it. Great machine. Uh, power plant's the same. Uh, I like to do the upgrades myself. So this is the machine I went with. Other than that, uh, that's pretty much it. So when you find something that you kind of like, take your family with you, go look at it. I would be hard-pressed to order a vehicle that you haven't sat in or haven't driven and put a deposit down, wait several months, when after several months you may be kind of over it, but you're still getting it. And then in the meantime, you're thinking, oh, maybe I should have got this model. Maybe I should have got that model. Uh, they're becoming a little bit more available. I know, you know, COVID set everything back in the supply chain. But now this stuff's more available. You may have to travel. Just find one. Go look at it. Take my advice. Learn from my mistake. Sit in it. Drive it. Uh, one of the first things things you're going to realize if you've never been in a side-by-side -side, they're all they all make noise they got some little rattles vibrations every time i've drove mine like is that something wrong with it no riding a few getting your friends ride them at the dealer um, i think the misconception is they drive you know the controls are like a car but they don't drive like a car if you go from your say a People that drive Jeeps, they get in one of these. It's a completely different ride than a Jeep. You know, even though they both can go off road, they both can go on road. It's a different ride. You'll hear rattles, a little bit of vibration on pretty much all of them, and a lot of it's due to the tires. A lot of people put a all-terrain, light-duty truck tire on these things because they mainly ride on the road. And I do take some road riding in this. This thing goes down the road great at 40 45 miles an hour you can have a conversation in it you can hear the radio it's a great machine i hope this video was helpful um, i have a facebook group can am commander 700 you can join it you can ask me any questions on any machine or any choices that you're wanting to make i can lead you in the right direction i'm in a yamaha group i'm in a kawasaki group Oh, I can't forget about the Kawasaki KRX 1000. If you're looking for something that's a billy goat that'll climb anything you put in front of it, that'll go through mud, and that doesn't have to go 70 miles an hour, the KRX 1000 is one bad machine. I got to throw that in there if you're considering something like that. Can Am Maverick X3, YXZ, or Polaris Razor, you got to throw that one in the mix. Watch videos, find a local dealer that you can get your machine in, that's uh, just a reliable dealer. They can get your machine in if you need to work on it. They can get you a decent price, something you're comfortable with. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe. Buy what makes you happy. And enjoy. Thank you.